Hello, my name is Jason Steger. I'm here with Dr. Patrick Flynn. Uh, in some of his other videos, Dr. Patrick Flynn was talking about the uh, Swiss watch principle. And uh, today, Dr. Patrick's got some other things he likes to share with you. And um, as a matter of fact, you had a friend that just had some episodes of passing out throughout the day. Towards the latter part of that, they took him to the uh, emergency room. And in our discussion with that, you were mentioning something about a fireman, firefighter, uh, carpenter mm -hmm. analogy. Would you go into that a little bit? Sure. Well, what happened is it came about when we actually started to actually really create a distinction between what medicine does and what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fallacy sometimes that comes up is people think that we're against drugs. And that's totally false, okay? We're very supportive of them, okay? On the fact when they're on a need basis. So I came up with the example. Actually, what happens, I heard a doc in Canada actually talk about this. And I just put my little own spin on it a little bit. But what happens is, is let's say that you left here today as soon as we're done this interview. Mm -hmm. And you went home, and all of a sudden your house is on fire. Who would you call? Fire department. That's right. Why don't you call your dentist? <laughs> Because my dentist has that little hose thing and gives you a bit of difference with that. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And if you think about that, what happens, it kind of sounds like a dumb question, doesn't it? it? Because why? When you think of a fire, automatically you think of the professional that's actually trained in it. Right. He has the right tools. And that's what can happen. A dentist may have a little hose, as you said, but right. they don't have anything they can really do with the fire. So let's say the fire department is called. Okay, They're going to show up with their equipment. They're going to pull up in a big red truck, in the fire truck. And they're going to jump out of there grabbing really two essential tools. Number one is going to be an axe, okay? Number two is going to be a hose. So let's say all of a sudden the first fireman jumps out of the truck, he runs up to your door with an axe, and what is he going to do with it? Uh, chop it to pieces. He's going to chop it down, okay? The next thing you do is he's going to run out your window, and what is he going to do with it? Smash the window. He's going to smash it down. So what happens is the guy with the hose is going to be falling in between them, and what he's going to do is he's going to run into the door, and he's going to start spraying inside your house. Yep. Now, let me ask you a question. When he starts spraying it down, is that water good for the walls? No. Is it good for the carpet? No. No, it's not. But if you look at it, for the first five to ten minutes, what has the fire department done to your house so far? Destroyed it. Destroyed it. <laughs> and no one ever thinks of it that way, but they're really there. They're using their tools, their knowledge, and everything they need to do to help stop the situation to burn the house down. See, the thing about it is they found out it's actually cheaper that if you actually catch the house early, catch it before it burns down, and you can resalvage it instead of letting the whole house burn down. So now what happens is this. So the fire department's been there. They're doing their job. And let's say that they do a fantastic job. They get there on time. There's no complications. They put the fire out. Now, when the fire department is done, would you ever ask them with the tools that they have available and their knowledge to help you rebuild their house? No. No. Now, think about why. It's not that, that uh, they're uneducated people about it. It's just the fact that what happens is they don't have the right tools. It's not their job. Mm -hmm. Now, even think about it. Let's say the fire department is sitting in the house, no chance of having another fire, and they start looking around. And they think what? Man, I did a pretty good job, didn't I? Right. Okay? You're going to have to call a totally different trained professional to really look at that situation and actually assess it and go, okay, listen, I have to rebuild this house. Now, who do you think is the best professional to handle that? Builder or carpenter, yeah, carpenter. or whatever. Okay, so we got the fire department carpenter. So a carpenter is going to walk into that same house, okay? And the fire department stand around, and let's say they're in the same time. Fire department is going to stand around and go, look at, man, I did a pretty good job here, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay? The carpenter is going to walk in the exact same house with a different perspective, and what's he going to think? Oh, man. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> yeah, you right. see Because why? Same house, same timing, same situation, mm -hmm. yet guess what? Two different perspectives. Right. The fire department looks at job completed, treated, stopped the fire. Yeah. The carpenter looks and goes, man, i got to rebuild that whole structure. Mm -hmm. i got to bring in certain materials, rebuild this wall. And you say, well, what does this whole example have to do with healthcare? Okay. Well, let's kind of read the analogy to healthcare today. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, as you said before, I had an acquaintance actually that uh, actually a good friend of mine actually passed out three times during a last time he was out for a couple minutes, and so the, he went to the emergency room. But let's take for example, let's say right now that you had a heart attack or stroke. Yep. Okay. Where do you think the best possible place for you to be is? To the emergency room. That's right. Okay. You wouldn't want me to run back in my kitchen and grab a knife and see if I could help you, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because why? It's, it's not my background. It's not right. my education. Right. But there are people who are trained professionals that can handle it. Now, so let's basically call the medical profession the fire department and, and what we do, the carpenters, okay? So now, all of a sudden, you go to the hospital, okay? And they're going to show up. They're going to go to the fire department there, you know, of course, the medical profession, and they're going to put you into that emergency room, and they're going to take their hose, and they're going to stick it into your arm, yep. okay? Now, think about this. When they start pumping that drug into your body, yep. is that good for your body? Probably not. Okay. And, and to give you a better analogy on it, to understand, because that's where, if you really think about it, 
You had to think about that for a second, didn't you? Yeah. Because what happens is, my question was, is it good for your body? I didn't ask if it saved your life. Right. Okay? Because think about this. When the fire department is spraying water on the walls and the carpet and your pictures of your kids, right. is it good for those things? No. No, it destroys them. Right. Okay? Just like, for example, there, when you look at a drug, there's always a side effect. There's not one drug out there that you don't turn around and go back that, guess what? It has yeah. a side effect. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay? Now, the one thing, it's not saying that that drug's not needed. It's just saying that, listen, when that goes in there, there can be some potential side effects that can happen. Right. But right. It, may, it may be needed to save your life. Right. Okay. So let's say that the um, drug didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Think about this. Um, you got one other option. They got to use their axe. They got to they do surgery. Right. Could a person possibly die from a surgery? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It happens. Okay. Right. But here's a question for you. If a person <clears throat> had a heart attack or stroke, would mm -hmm. you agree with me beyond a shadow of a doubt? The most, the best place for them, the most safe place for them, guess what? They may have to go to the hospital and they may need drugs or surgery to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. God bless. That's what it was created for. There, we have one of the best emergency care systems there are in the world. See, one thing is, yes, we rank very low in health, but as far as like the emergency care system, if I had a heart attack, I'd want to be here. Right. You follow me? Right. The confusion comes about is when they are all done. So let's say now, just like the fire department did a fantastic job, put out the fire, all of a sudden, let's say the doctors did a fantastic job. They stopped you from having a heart attack. Yep. They corrected the possibility of stroke, and your body's stable. When they are done with you, do they look at you and go, okay, now we got a burnt up house, okay? What are we going to do to help rebuild this situation? Does that ever happen? No, usually they'll say, you know, thanks a lot and send you with a medication. And yeah, yeah. and people say, well, people say, well, why would my doctor do that? That's not their education. That's not right. their background. Right. They, and, and some of them will even sometimes try to give you advice and it's really not even that sound, okay? Right, right. Here, take a fish oil. Take this. For what purpose? You know what I'm saying? It's still, they try to even tell people to use some natural stuff based on treating it like mm -hmm. a fire. Mm -hmm. And what I always say, it's like this. It's like taking chlorinated water and throwing on the fire and like taking spring water and throwing on the fire, right. okay? That you're still trying to treat that fire either with a chemical or in more natural things. Right. So what I always try to talk to people about is this, is the fact that there's no doubt that everybody needs to have a situation where you may need the fire department. Yeah. But here's a question for you. My question to all people are, who is your carpenter? Who is your doc that actually teaches you how to do what? Rebuild those systems back to normal. Right. If you look at, my, at the Swiss watch principle that I created, it's talk about getting all the systems and rebuilding those systems back to normal so the body can do what? Function back to normal. Right. Okay? So if you have a heart attack or stroke or any disease condition, and if you're suffering from taking a drug, it's calming the fire down. But if we don't rebuild those systems, guess what happens? Right. You're going to... Yeah. It's just going to stay... It's not going to be rebuilt. Exactly. And what happens is you say, well, where do you start? What goes on? Let's say I did have a heart attack. Let's say I did have a stroke. Let's say I just even have eczema or something like that. Well, you know some system is actually starting to break down. You know that you're having a fire. Okay? So what happens is that will allow you to now to you can test certain systems. For example, if you have nutritional deficiencies, we can test you to see what you actually do. We can use blood. We can use urine. We can use hair. And we can find out what your deficiencies are. So we're like that carpenter coming in and going, we need this many uh, sheets of sheets of sheetrock, right. we need this many two by fours, we need this to help rebuild that body back to normal, right. okay? And if you really look about it, that's what really healthcare is. So we have to stop looking at drugs as healthcare, okay? What happens is, just think of it this way, emergency situation, God bless, that's what they're there for, we'll start to, we'll start to you know, correct you from dying, but when it comes to it totally, we gotta still rebuild that system. Right, I know we got about a minute left here, I just wanna ask one quick question for okay. you in the shortest amount of time possible, before the heart attack, what can we do as carpenters right. to keep our structure you know, strong and, right. and, and a strong foundation quickly? Well, well that's really like, like I said, that's kind of like a, um, just a nice little tune-up, okay? So let's say a person comes in and we find that they're starting to degenerate. We find out that their blood work is off. What happens is we have to look and first of all go back to that Swiss watch. We have to find out what system is really being affected. If it's cardiovascular system, I mean, I, no joke, I can give you actually people that we have that they're in congestive heart failure, okay, so they haven't had a heart attack yet or haven't dropped dead yet, but they're in the stages <laughs> where their blood's pulling their feet, that we have to start regenerating that heart, okay? Yeah. And that's one thing that we've really lost, uh, really lost a perspective on. The, the skin cells that you woke up with this morning, guess what, by tonight, they're going to be on the floor. Right. Our body regenerates, and that's really what health is, about regeneration. So we will find out what that body needs to regenerate that heart, that liver, that kidney, and all those processes or those adrenals, all the things that help us rebuild that system. Okay. And once again, what, what we got to start with? Our foundational stuff. We've got to start right. with our nutritional aspects. We've right. got to start with our nervous system. We've got to start with all those things that is that control mechanism to rebuild that system. Right. So find a great carpenter, ask the right questions, follow his building procedures, and for more information, check out Dr. Patrick Flynn. 
Dr. Patrick, thank you for yes. being here. You and for Dr. Patrick, I'm Jason Steger. Yeah.